from the capital city of Charleston, West Virginia, this is Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. Inside West Virginia Politics is brought to you by AARP West Virginia, your ally for real possibilities in the Mountain State. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Inside West Virginia Politics. Well, they burned the midnight oil at the state capitol this week here in Charleston. The House passing an education reform bill late into the night on Wednesday after a three-day special session. Let's get more now on the story from my co-anchor, Adrian Robbins. House Bill 206, an omnibus education bill, has officially passed, meaning charter schools are on the move yet again at the West Virginia State Capitol. The misinformation is, is the things that gets me in all this, to, to uh, disregard what really is happening in there and disregard the educators. In an over 12-hour floor session, the House of Delegates debated over 20 amendments to the bill. The most noteworthy took the limit of charter schools from 10 to three initial charter schools, then after 2023, three more every three years. It seemed to be an approach that, uh, that the House and the Senate, as well as the governor, uh, could support. The bill has now passed the House, but union leaders say they'll follow it to the Senate and to the governor's desk, and they'll even continue this battle till 2020 if need be. You saw that these people are committed. What I hope now is that they continue that commitment, they continue it into this next year, and they continue the commitment into the 2020 election, because that's the next step that we have to do. Reporting in Charleston, I'm Adrian Robbins for Inside West Virginia Politics. All right, Adrian, thanks for that report. We are joined right now by the Senate President, Republican Mitch Carmichael, Republican of Jackson County, again, the Senate President. It's great to be with you. It's Mark. good to have you. I mean, this was a busy week, a very tense week, an exciting week. I mean, a lot of drama. What are your thoughts on what the House passed and can the Senate live with it? We think that we can live with it. I'm very pleased that the House has uh, recognized the value of education in West Virginia and how important it is that we finally and once and for all join the rest of America in terms of charter school authorization. That was a big contentious issue and the House has uh, seen the value of that. The state Senate has advocated on behalf of student success for a couple of years now. We've really been working hard on that. And it's important, Mark, uh, the people that are your listeners now know that our school systems in West Virginia can be better and that our students that are uh, populating these schools can do better. Our children and our teachers and our parents are as gifted and as blessed and as talented as any in America. And we have fought very hard to make sure that uh, we provide the opportunity and the potential for those children to achieve their goals and their dreams in West Virginia. We came a long way on this issue. Initially, we had unlimited charter schools in the Senate when the House initially introduced its bill it had a cap of 10. We wind up with three and then there's going to be some evaluation period to see if the three are working after a few years. Your thoughts on that and is that enough to get the support of your fellow senators? I think it is. I mean we are always willing to compromise. We have always uh, found that uh, the best path to progress is through a dialogue and through uh, uh, you know sometimes you need to compromise. We're not dogmatic in these things but this bill when you think about it Mark and for the uh, teachers in West Virginia, it includes a historic pay raise, the largest single annual pay raise in state history. It does so many things for wraparound services for our children in these schools, for uh, those who have come to school with issues of drug addictions and so forth. That has so many components with that. Uh, some uh, incentives for math teachers and for other things that can really move this state forward in terms of education. And I'm very proud, very proud of the state Senate and the House of Delegates for moving this bill forward and in the face of all the opposition and those who cling to the status quo, I know West Virginia can be the best in America. You know what your critics are going to say. They're already saying that this could have all been done in the regular session. There was a similar bill to have three pilot charter schools that the House passed sent back to you guys and it was killed. And they're saying now you've spent hundreds of thousand dollars on a special session when this could have been done in, in March. Oh, well, A, it's not hundreds of thousands of dollars, and B, it was not the same by any means. Okay. And that as this bill has evolved, we've gained support, we've reached out. As you remember, there was all this consternation about you haven't listened to the uh, education community, you haven't you know, heard from all the constituents. And so we hit the pause button and we went out and the State Department of Education did all these public forums, all the state senators and delegates went to these various events. We heard from the public and overwhelmingly they support 
most of the components in this bill. And then there's a group of people that want some school choice and some options, and we have accommodated them also. So everyone gets something in this bill. You live in a border county, Jackson County. We've had a, a problem in the state of hemorrhaging, losing teachers to the five bordering states that pay, in some cases, much better than we do in terms of teachers. We've now had back-to-back 5% -back pay raises. Are you guys going to propose another 5% pay raise come the, the legislative session in, in January? Because we're still playing catch-up with our neighboring states, well, aren't we? Listen, we have put uh, this bill invest a hundred, probably after the House uh, amendments to it, fifty million dollars, one hundred and fifty million dollars of taxpayer money into the traditional school system this year, as well as last year. I mean, we're we're reaching the point where we, you know, we have to make sure that we uh, manage our uh, structural finances in a long-term viable manner. But certainly, we recognize that teachers continue to be underpaid in West Virginia, and we want them to be uh, the best paid in America. So. I want to move West Virginia from 49th in America in student success to number one, and then we can talk about all the pay we need uh, for those great teachers. All right, we want to thank Senate President Mitch Carmichael, Republican of Jackson County, for joining us. Awesome. Been a busy week. This issue is not over. We'll keep on top of it. Thank Thanks. you very much, Mark. All right, we're going to continue our discussion on education reform in the Mountain State after this break. Stay with us on Inside West Virginia Politics.